All right, so I'm gonna presume that you've never touched or opened the bubble editor before, which is probably unlikely, but at least that gives us you know, a common starting ground for everybody. So from your main sort of bubble account app page, click on that new app button, okay? And then you can fill in some information here. We're gonna call this the AirDev Bootcamp Week Zero app. Um, and actually we need to have no spaces in that name. Um, and then this is just giving you asking you some information that Bubble really wants to know. So we're not too concerned uh, about giving, you know, very specific answers here. That's more for Bubble as the company for their own reference. So then we click on create a new app and Bubble will of course go ahead and boot up the editor for us. All right, and when it's finished, okay, you have the option of going with this application assistant. We're actually not gonna do that. So I'm gonna start with a blank page and I'm gonna close that assistant. Okay, so you're now presented with a blank page in what in Bubble is called the design tab. And we'll go through what these other tabs do in other videos, but for now we're just gonna focus on the design tab, which is where you're actually gonna structure the visual look of your application. Okay, so this is where you literally design the application pages as your users will interact with them. And the tools that you have to do that with are here on the left hand side. You have a whole bunch of different elements. And with any of these elements, like this text visual element, what I can do is click on it and then I can drag a box here on the screen and that'll actually create this text input for me, okay? Which I can then move anywhere on the page, okay? If I double click on this, that actually opens up this properties editor, which is gonna let me customize this text element. And the most intuitive and important one of these is actually designing what the text is gonna say. So we might say, you know, hello world to use that tired old convention. And now we have, you know, we have a text on the page. It says hello world. And what we can actually do is go to this top right section and click on preview. And now we're seeing what our app would look like to our users, okay? So we've just got a blank page with a text on it. That's kind of what we would expect, right? You also have a few other customization options here in this properties editor, okay? If I come down here to the style section, okay? Bubble actually gives you a whole bunch of pre-built styles that you can apply to a text like this H1 heading, okay? And that's gonna change the look of the element itself. Okay, but I can actually also click off of any of these particular styles and that's gonna give me granular control where I can actually change the, you know, the font, I can change the size of this text, um, I can change the color, the alignment, all of the things that you would expect in similar kind of visual design programs. Now, one thing right off the bat that I just wanna cover so you don't get confused. If I just drag this over, for example, and let me, let me put another text here and I'll just preview this page. You notice that since I've made changes, we have this just updated the page, please refresh. Okay, so that's what you're gonna see anytime that the underlying code, so to speak, or the underlying logic of your application has changed. You actually need to reload that preview window. And you see this preview window looks a little strange based on what we designed, okay? The, these two elements look kind of close to one another, but over here in the preview, they look really far away, okay? And that's to do with what is called responsive behavior, okay? And responsive behavior is where your elements are actually being placed on the page relative to one another. And the reason for that is so that they can be displayed to your users even when the screen size is different for each of those users. So if a user is viewing it on mobile, for example, or on a smaller screen, I'll just like make my screen a little smaller here. You can see, well, all of a sudden this hello world has jumped below this other text, okay? And if I change the size and all of a sudden it jumps back up, Okay, so what's going on there is the responsive settings have a rule that is determining that that hello world should only sort of stay in that placement on the page above a certain page width and then it needs to move to another part of the page. So that can make designing your visual elements really confusing. So we actually wanna turn off responsive design for now. 
just as a quick aside, it is here within this responsive tab that you would actually determine all of the rules for responsive behavior, okay? But in the beginning, while you're getting the hang of bubble, okay, and mainly that is gonna be, you know, focused on learning the logic of how to actually design behavior into your application, we just wanna turn responsive design off altogether. So to do that, we're just gonna double click here on the page, and that's gonna open up the properties editor for the page itself, okay? And our page is the index page, okay? And you can also see that if we go up to this top left dropdown, okay? This is a list of all of the pages that we have in the application, and Bubble gives you a few by default. You can, of course, create some new pages as well. So the main page that it creates by default is this index page, so that's your home page. So in the properties editor for this index page, okay, we have this option to make this element fixed width, okay? And if we click that, that'll basically say, look, no matter what size screen the user is viewing your application in, okay, I just want you to show the elements exactly as I've placed them here in the editor. So if I now preview this page, Okay, you can see it, see it looked a little bit different there. These elements are actually closer together. That's actually resembling the true distance between them as I've designed here in the design tab. And if I change the screen size, then they actually don't move relative to that screen size. They just get cut off. Okay, let's cover a few more of these visual elements now just briefly. Um, we have a button which you can use to have your user trigger behavior or tr trigger logic in your application. You've got an icon link, you've got the ability to actually have an image here. You can upload an image or show an image dynamically from your database. We'll cover that in a later video. Um, some other elements here, video like a YouTube or a Vimeo embed, uh, a, a block of HTML code that's gonna render on the page. Um, even a map element that is going to let you show a particular address here on the map. And if you want to know how to actually use any of these features or any of these visual elements, all you have to do is actually hover over it and click this C reference. That's going to actually open up the bubble manual to the relevant part and it in that, you're going to see the instructions for how to actually use and configure that particular bubble feature. And that goes for any part of bubble, actually. So even this marker address, right? If I'm confused, actually, what does that mean? How do I use that? I can also, also click to see reference and that'll take me to the relevant part of the manual. So that's the visual elements in a nutshell. But we also have down here a really important category of elements, and those are the containers, specifically the group container, okay? So probably doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what this one does, okay? If I've now put this group here on the page, and I grab my text and drag it inside, okay? And you can know that it's inside because you'll get that red border, okay? Well, now, I actually have a group with one text element inside and I can move it around at will, right? I could put in a button as well into this group, okay? And these are now grouped together. If I actually move up to this elements tree here on the left-hand side, this is actually an inventory of all of the elements that are on this page, um, ordered by their hierarchy. So at the highest level, I just have this group which I can twirl open and you can see that inside, indeed, I have a couple of elements here just as we'd expect. Now you might be wondering also like how do these names get determined, right? Like the names of these elements. Bubble is clearly doing some intelligent work here. It's named our text element over the actual text value that we put inside. Okay, and it just gave this group a name because it's the first group, but we can actually change any of these names just by clicking up the top here. And we might call this group master just because it's sort of like the highest level group that we have here on the page. Just delete this button. 
The other thing is that it might be, you know, a little difficult to figure out where your elements are here on the page. You know, like that group is just completely invisible if I've clicked off of it. So to actually make this a little bit easier to work with, what I can actually do is come up to this grids and borders section up here and I can click show element borders. Okay. And that's going to allow me to see the borders of an element even when I'm not got it actually highlighted. Some other cool things that you can do from here is actually show a grid behind the elements. And if I have snap elements to grid selected, then I can actually you know, move my elements and they will snap intuitively to the grid behind. I can also have snap elements to edges. So that'll let me actually you know, snap this text right up at the border of this group. Okay, or the one that I use most frequently, which is snap to edges and the grid. Okay, and you can use this grids and borders step feature here just to change the size of the underlying grid. I like to have it at about 20. Okay, so that's some basic stuff around designing your page. How do we actually make our app sing, so to speak? How do we make it do stuff so that our users can interact with it? That's what we're gonna cover in the next video.